Today, I want to tell you the urgency of the Basura Sagerola. You see, we have a neighbor, his name is Dovid. He knocked on the door the other day, and uh, I thought he was just borrowing some, well, he's always borrowing, you know, where I come from, they would borrow a cup of sugar. Uh, it was just a, a neighborly thing to give somebody. We have to love our neighbor, friend. This neighbor, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you start your effusive thanks for all I've done, would, if you really appreciate what I've done, would you let me give you some? I ran and got the Orthodox Jewish Bible. And I told him, uh, page 700 has a prayer. Uh, I admit I have sinned. This is called Teshuvah. Uh, and, 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 I, and I believe that my, my yotzer in heaven, Moshiach Adonainu, uh, your banner over me is love, and uh, you've taken my filthy robes. Uh, all these words are actually from the Tanakh. They are, they are actually in the Hebrew, including the word Yeshua, including the word Goel and Moshiach and Kohen, Kohen Le'olam al Divrati, Melk and Sedek, we're talking about Yeshua ben Dovid, uh, Kapora, these are all there. This is not a non-Jewish prayer. And I said, would you please take this and pray this prayer? And you know what? He died this morning. So I gave him the book a week ago, and now he's gone. So friend, let me tell you something. You need to go to http colon forward slash forward slash www.afii.org forward slash capital O, capital J, capital B, dot PDF, and get a free copy, download it, and turn to page 700, and pray this prayer. Today is the day of salvation. Anything beyond 24 hours is very iffy, friend. You're not promised tomorrow. Don't, don't boast about tomorrow. You don't know what a day may bring. David is not here now. He was here last night when I was translating Amos. He was here. He's not here this morning. He's gone. The police were out in the hall. The, uh, the, he's in the, his body is at the morgue. His cat is already at the shelter. Uh, even his uh, caregivers are not aware of what has happened to Dovid. They won't know until Monday morning when they show up for work and see the police seal on the door. Friend, today is the day. And, and I want to deal with people who are giving us bad PR. There's always, there's always somebody from the devil's department who wants to slander the brethren. And uh, the devil is a liar. And I want to deal with this question of, is the Orthodox Jewish Bible fraudulent? You will find that. You will find that if you uh, Google the word fraudulent uh, and the uh, name of the translation. And I want to tell you something very clearly. And that is basically this. If this Bible is fraudulent, then Rav Shaul's uh, legal brief, which we find in the book of Acts, is also fraudulent. Because what he would say when he was taken before kings and governors was always the same thing. That he was standing trial for nothing but the resurrection hope of Judaism. That this was his faith. And uh, that as a rabbi, he was standing for the Tehiyas Hamasim, the resurrection. And that because his faith was Judaism, then he could be exempted from the worship of the imperial cult because Judaism was a religio licita, going back to the time of Julius Caesar. And as such, he could claim that exemption and if, he, if his claim of that exemption is fraudulent, then okay, uh, uh, this, this Bible is fraudulent. But you can't have it both ways, friends. You, you can't say that this Bible is fraudulent, but, but his uh, legal brief was not fraudulent. Those of you who, who are very Gentilized out there, and, and you also don't like this, and we have some Jewish people that are so Gentilized they don't even understand what I'm saying. You need to go back and read the book of Acts. You need to look at Acts chapter 18, verse 15, where Gallio himself sets a legal precedent by ruling that Paul's dispute was a Judaism matter 
a Judaism matter that he washed his hands of. He wasn't going to get involved in it. So if Paul is fraudulent, if he doesn't really have a claim to exemption from the empirical cult worship, if his religion isn't really religio licita, if his, if, his, if his legal brief is fraudulent, if the book of Acts is fraudulent, if what he said in the book of Acts is fraudulent, if his case that he made before the governors and kings that you find in the book of Acts, if all that is fraudulent, then this, this book is indeed fraudulent. But if, if it isn't fraudulent, fraudulent, then it isn't. And friend, I want you to know that the Jews we're talking about at this early period claimed to be Orthodox, worshipped in the Beis HaMikdash, in the Temple of Jerusalem, and also in the Shul. The word synagogue is actually found in James chapter 2, verse 2. If you go to Acts chapter 21, verses 20 to 26, you will find Rav Shaul and all the other believers worshipping as Orthodox Jews in the Shul. And so, if they were asked about their Jewish orthodoxy, they wouldn't want to be written off. Nor, for that matter, would they want this translation written off as fraudulent. And so, friends, I'm going to appeal to you today to do what I was doing. While this man, this next door neighbor, was dying with the Orthodox Jewish Bible on his, on his little table there by his bed, with this prayer right here taken from the Tanakh, right there on page 700. While all that was going on, I was translating Amos, the ninth chapter. And I want you to know in that ninth chapter, when this all important decision was on the, uh, on the books there in Acts chapter 15, about what are we gonna do with these Goyim that are also believing? Uh, there was a half brother of, of the Mashiach. His name was uh, Yaakov and Yaakov remembered this verse, and he stood up, uh, and here's the Zikne Adat B'nai Yisrael, all these uh, Jews around him, going to the synagogue, going to the, to the Beis HaMikdash, to the Temple of Jerusalem, and what does he say? I want to read this from the Orthodox Jewish Bible. This is uh, Amos chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, and here's what it says. In that day will I raise up the, the Sukkah Stovin, the, 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 the tent of David. That means the, his, his messianic uh, thing, his, the whole kingdom thing is going to be raised up. Right now it's fallen, he says. But Amos sees a day when it will, it, it will be raised up. And then in the next verse, he says, All the Goyim which are called by Shimi, by my name, uh, he's talking about how they will come into the sukkah of David. Not, not by getting circumcised, not by laying to fill in, not, not by uh, 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 all this uh, stuff, but, but by, by having the name put on them as well. Uh, Amos chapter 9, verse 12, uh, uh, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the Goyim which are called by my name. So you see, all the, the non-Jews that are called by his name are grafted in. And so uh, you got to remember your calling, friend. You are called like Amos. He was following after the zone, the, the, the flock. And God called him and he sent him to preach. He was not a preacher for hire. He did not have a career of pulpit functionary work. He was not a loiterer like we see in some of the seminaries today, just loitering around there, uh, counting the number of angels that can dance on the head of a pen. No, he was a sheep raiser. Uh, he, he raised sheep and he took care of their winter feed from the sycamore tree, the leaves and the fruit. And, uh, and, and God took him. God took him. Let me tell you something, friend. God took me from Beverly Hills. God took me as a Screen Actors Guild actor, an equity actor, uh, an after actor. And he called me. He called me. He called me. He put his, 
his hand on me. And, and then in August of 1971, four years